Hey, how you guys doing? This is Mike again here for tutorial number two in our Pong Java applet tutorial series, um, which will of course go past Pong, but uh, that's what the aim is right now. Uh, in the first tutorial, we went ahead and created something that did nothing, um, at least nothing. Well, actually, no, it does nothing except for create an applet. Um, and in this tutorial, we're actually going to get as far as drawing a little ball. And, uh, you know, if the time doesn't go over too long, i.e. if I don't ramble like I did the last time, um, then we will even move it. Now, uh, one thing I did want to actually apologize for, I know the sound uh, quality is absolutely terrible. This microphone sucks balls, but... Uh, I'll be getting a new one pretty soon, uh, especially if I keep this up, which I think I'm going to. So, uh, yeah, just bear with me for now, guys. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so for it's also 3:30 in the morning. I don't know why I'm still awake. Uh, anyway, we are going to, as you can see from you know Mysterio here, uh, we are going to create what is called a thread. Now the thread is going to start in, we're actually going to have to optimize this code. I'm way too tired to think about it until tomorrow. Um, we may be redoing everything. Uh, the way that he structures everything is pretty bad. Um, but for now, uh, it's okay for learning purposes. So we're going to go ahead and create what's called a thread. Sorry that I'm moving this around. I know it's probably really annoying. In fact, I'll try never to do that again. Um, basically, I think we need to call, no we don't, no we don't, okay, so I guess that comes either with AWT or applet, but uh, threads do not require any packages to import up at the top, um, which is something that I covered in the last tutorial. So basically we're going to define a new thread, like, like he says up here, and then we are going to start it. Now I will go ahead and let you guys know what that means. A thread is basically um, how Java optimizes its code. Uh, Java is an interpreted language and it's not a compiled language. And while threads, uh, you, I'm sure you guys have heard of um, uh, multi-threading, you know, and with your, your processor's ability to multi-thread or whatever, um, it's basically the same idea, um, but what a thread is, and I might actually create a new tutorial to go into detail with this, because it's probably going to be a weird concept to wrap your head around with this, but um, basically it takes a long piece of code, or what would be a long piece of code that you would be sending over in a data stream all by itself, um, so it would take a long time, it splits it up and it, it sends s multiple smaller packages at damn near the same time. So right now it's not necessary per se, but if we were going to do anything other than, you know, move a ball around, we're going to want multiple threads. It, it'll become clearer later, and I very well may do a tutorial just to create a small little program to create a new thread, or, well, multiple threads and show you guys how they work. But basically, we're going to create our new thread here, um, and we're going to refer to it by TH. That's the name of our thread. Uh, and then we go ahead and start it. And uh, if you don't start it, then the thread, I mean, it'll be defined here as TH, but if you don't start it, then it's not actually going to do anything, uh, even though it still doesn't right now. But, uh, okay, so that part is done. Uh, now we have to go into the run function, and we are going to do quite a bit to the run function. Um, let's see. Actually, let's go down to paint first. I think that's going to make a little bit more sense. Um, ooh, hey. See, this is why this, this tutorial doesn't make any sense at all. He's going all over the place. We need to find some global um, or high scope variables. And what I mean by high scope variable is if we place a variable inside this run function, if, we were, if I'm going to paste what I just copied there, 
the int x pos y pos and radius here uh, these are considered localized to the run function or method um, basically if if this is declared and defined here now a difference between a declaration and a definition is um, if i were to go ahead and say int x underscore pos which just means an integer that we're going to refer to as x pos um, that's a declaration right here that's just saying that i've got um, an integer x pos and i'm going to do something with it later on uh, pos obviously stands for position <coughs> or that might not actually be obvious i don't know i'm sorry i'm assuming <coughs> i'm an ass um, to define a function or a variable or a function or something, you give it a value or you tell it to do something. Um, so these are technically variable declarations, or, um, definitions, my bad. Uh, and if we kept them in run, they would only be called in run. Now, if since we have our open bracket and our closed bracket here for run, and this program quite conveniently highlights everything for me, wasn't really expecting that, even though I know that it happens. Um, we would only be able to use these guys in here so like we would tell it to do something now it would very well be able to um or if we said like this will make more sense plus five or plus equal five that's going to take five add it to the position or add it to this variable x pos which is defined as a hundred so and then it will change this so from here on out in this in this method x pos would be 105. <coughs> um so that's basically how that works but it's only in this method so if i were to go outside of the method and try and use x pos we would get this would return an error it would say like where the fuck are you getting x pos from it doesn't make any sense so we need to make sure that we are up here and we're going to declare these above everything else God, i really can't type when i'm doing this i'm sorry i feel like an idiot um we're going to declare these above all of our methods so they can be used in all of our methods if need be um and i think this guy's actually going to go ahead and sit at you know what no we're going to do 150 150 and then radius 20. okay um so down here in run, what we want to do is there's something about thread prioritization. Uh, I haven't really gotten that deep into it, but this guy seems to think that it's important. So I'm assuming it is important. So we're going to go ahead and throw these in here first. And I can assume what they'll do, um, but I don't want to tell you guys what my assumptions are, especially if they're wrong uh, and you are learning then we're going to have issues, obviously. So, all right, basically, all right, well, you know what, whatever. Uh, thread prioritization is basically, you can, th you can throw as many threads into a program as possible and run as many as a computer or a server can handle at a time. Um, so what this is doing is when run is called here, it takes the thread that we're using, current thread, and it sets its priority to the minimum priority. So that means if anything else is going on um, in the background, when this is called, this is gonna be minimal. Like, so everything else that's already running is going to be running and, and this is not going to affect it. Um, and then inside of this, we're going to have a while true loop. This is terrible, terrible programming practice, but example sake, it's 3.30 in the morning. Uh, I. I'm just learning Java, you know, we'll, we'll get through it right now. This is okay for a tutorial, it's okay. But while true, typically you don't use. Now in Java you may, but all the other programming languages that I've dealt with never have. So I don't know, we'll see. Basically, uh, the reason why I'm throwing this into the while, a while loop will, it takes parameters here and you can put several different parameters. You can put like a conditional operator, like uh, while X is less than five, uh, do whatever's in the brackets here. Um, and then like inside of this to make sure that it breaks out, you know, you'd want to add X. So like if we had, you know what, let's go ahead and do that since this is a beginner tutorial. If X is less than five or while X is less than five, then we're going to for 
right now, all we're going to be doing is setting a priority level, which you're not even going to see. So whatever. But um, what you would want to do now, this would run if we had a variable defined as X. So let's say X equals one. Um, this is defined here. So the program knows that now when it jumps down to here, it says while X is less than five, it's going to say, well, is X less than five? Well, X is one. So yes. So while it's less than five, it's going to do this. Now, the reason why while true loops are bad um, is because 